Mark Rogers TV and the SEC meetings wrapping up last week in Destin, Florida. Joined by Charlie Burris of the Southeasterner, we'd like to talk uh, this time about uh, the early signing period proposal uh, that's been initiated, I guess, Charlie, by the ACC that would like to have an early signing period that would end on August 1st or begin on August 1st, and then the SEC uh, not necessarily wanting, for the most part, to have an early signing period, but think it's inevitable at this point from what I read and would like to get out in front of it and at least um, make their opinion known. And if there's going to be an early signing period, at least put into place some, some principles and some parameters that they would like to have in place. Yeah, uh, basically, it was unanimous among the coaches at the meetings that they wanted this early signing period right after... Thanksgiving, just for the kids who really know where they want to go uh, early and aren't the ones that are choosing between, you know, maybe 10 or 15 schools. Um, and they can just get locked in early and not have to worry about it uh, anymore. And it's it's an interesting uh, prospect because it, it doesn't seem like it would change anything uh, all that much, but there are a few problems with it kind of like... Uh, Recruits like to change their minds a whole lot. I think that's pretty well known. But uh, if they signed early and then decided that they wanted to go somewhere else after the fact, then they would be locked in, and then you'd have all of those problems having to get them out of that letter of intent. Or, honestly, like, they probably wouldn't be able to get out of the letter of intent, and then they would be signed to a school they don't want to go to. So it creates some problems. But really, it doesn't seem like, other than from the conference itself, there would be any real backlash because obviously the the coaches want it because it would help their recruiting. So, I think there's more positives here than negatives because yeah. number one, um, there's speculation that goes crazy, especially after the football season ends from early January until the first week of February. We just hear all sorts of stuff. It's all over Twitter. These guys, the speculation, the the antics that are pulled by both potential student athletes in college and then um, the media it, it's just crazy it's crazy it would at least limit those people that want to make a selection and believe that they have made the decision and determination where they'd like to school and it gives them that one day window that opportunity at the end of the football season uh, right after Thanksgiving to make that determination get it signed sealed delivered have it done it's over then no more speculation um, as you mentioned, they would have to hold to that commitment, but that's no different than the commitment that they make usually around the 5th of February, a few months later. Once they make that commitment, it's, it's done, and that letter of intent is, is, um, is their commitment uh, that can't be changed. Uh, I've heard comments made about all the wasted money chasing around recruits for a few months that could be limited. Uh, again, I'm thinking, and I'm just throwing out numbers here, if Alabama brings in 25 players, there might be five guys that know, I just want to go to Alabama. Yeah, I've checked out a few other schools, but I am locked on Alabama. I've wanted to go to Alabama since I was in eighth grade, whatever the case might be. And they can they can get the circus over with, and they can end all speculation and all the 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 torturing <laughs> that it is uh, from all the speculation of the fans and the media, as you well know better than I do, that uh, this recruiting period has become just a circus with social media in the last several years. And for those guys that would want to remove themselves from that and know where they want to go to school and play football, they could remove themselves from that and end all speculation. So I think that's a good yeah. thing. Um, I guess the negative is the, the coaches have so much pressure on them to recruit year-round all the time. I know Mark Rick had made a comment about, can we have a summer? That would be nice if we had like one month in the summer to get to know our family. Um, but the, 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 uh, the pressure on these coaches is to recruit every day, to be in contact, to be texting, to be on social media, to be in contact with these kids all the time. Uh, I guess the negative here would be that would be amplified during the season, I would think, possibly to a certain extent, because if that... that um, that open, in, open day, that early signing day, would be right after the end of the season or maybe right before the Auburn-Alabama game mm -hmm. and the rest of the SEC um, closing games, uh, there would be some pressure to, to close the deal maybe on a few people, and, and that would uh, 
kind of intensify possibly recruiting, but again, it shouldn't be those guys that they're really battling with other schools about. It's about those kids that have made that determination. So I, I think um, if what the SEC coaches had to say is is true, that the other conferences are leaning in that division, in that direction, and it's going to happen anyway, so the SEC at least wanted to have a say in the way that that was going to go. It's going to come down to a vote of all football-playing schools in FBS football. So that's what it's going to come down to, and uh, they think it's pretty inevitable. So the SEC coaches and ADs were pretty unanimous in wanting to uh, have that one day open for early signing, and then uh, everything else stays status quo as it's been in recent years with the uh, February signing on the uh, first Wednesday of February. So, so we'll see how that goes. And um, we'd like to talk about... Uh, Arkansas's new coach, who who seemed to be making news uh, the second he signed the contract in Fayetteville. Uh, so, so your thoughts, Charlie, about uh, Brett Bielema? He made a number of comments. I, I know one in particular. He's still being asked about comparing the Big Ten and the SEC. He, he really didn't elaborate. He just said something about holy pistol. I didn't know what that meant. Uh, there's there's been this Brett Bielema vernacular that's kind of developing, and this is just the latest. So some of these things you just have to kind of interpret. Um, he's come out against um, the hurry up offense, and he loves the rules to slow down the game because he wants to play uh, get his defensive players out there. And he cites health concerns for the players. I don't know how true that is. I can't question it uh, at the same time because I don't know his motive. But uh, I think it's more about his style of play there at Arkansas and what he had at Wisconsin. Um, talks about uh, why he went to Wis or left Wisconsin, went to Arkansas it's to recharge the battery. He got a little stale at Wisconsin after nine years, and we know <laughs> that he was making like two and a half million at Wisconsin, and that was increased by a million dollars per year. So. I'm guessing that that had something to do with it too, um, and yeah. and the SEC is paying assistant coaches a lot more money than they are in the Big Ten, mm -hmm. uh, and so it's easier to keep assistant coaches. So a lot of things that uh, Brett Bielema had to say throughout uh, the SEC is always going to get two teams in the playoff. We might even get three teams in the playoff. Why he's worrying about the college football playoff right now, I, I wouldn't <laughs> yeah. conjecture on that either. So. Anyway, uh, your thoughts, Charlie, on Brett Bielema continuing to, to rant. At least he makes it entertaining, I guess. That is probably one of the only positives from a lot of the things that he says because, like, like you said, I mean, he just seemingly left Wisconsin at a high, uh, kind of inexplicably. Yes, the SEC as a whole is better, but, I mean, he was winning Rose Bowls and uh, left on a year when he won the Big Ten Championship. It didn't really make a whole lot of sense. And then he came here, went 3-9 and nine last year, kind of made a fool out of himself with all of this, the 10-second rule the hurry up against the hurry-up offense. And uh, it hasn't been a good road for him so far, but uh, in, in the interviews that he did at the, the SEC meetings, he basically said he wants to be a respected voice, and he knows that the only way to do that is to get wins, which is very true, and he hasn't done that yet. He has not won a game in the SEC. Um, and he talked about his uh, rivalry with Gus Malzahn rivalry. Uh, it's more of a war of words than it is on the football field because, uh, like you said, Arkansas is not in the best place right now. But... Um, <laughs> I, I thought the 10-second rule thing was dead, but he continued to bring it up and really pushed this idea of player safety and that that was uh, his only concern when he talked about that. But really, he runs a very slow, run-heavy offense that doesn't... Uh, or that that's his style of play, and then his defense has a hard time handling uh, like Auburn's style of uh, play. And so it seems like that's the real motivation, but... Uh, I guess player safety maybe has some part, and he said that he also said that there were studies going on uh, about player safety. I don't know how much validity there is to that, but uh, that was one thing. And then, yeah, he said he thought a minimum of two teams in the SEC would make it into the college football playoff. Yeah, it's probably not pertaining to his team right now uh, in that same uh, way. And it was interesting. I looked at an article of Jason Kirk at SB Nation 
wrote it, he said that it would likely would have been the case that two teams would have made it in the S- FBS playoff from the SEC this year, 2012, 2009, 2008, 2007, and 2003. So Bielema is right about that in a way, but uh, it just probably wouldn't be Arkansas making it. Is just some interesting comments uh, from a coach that really hasn't done a whole lot yet. And that's it. It's really interesting. It's not like he's taking pot shots at people. It's just it's just odd the the things yeah. that he talks about and the things that he ram rants about and the the vernacular that he uses doesn't always add up and make a whole lot of sense. Sometimes it leaves you wondering exactly what he's talking about. So he's not real clear on his statements, not real direct in regards to uh, his thoughts and opinions. Sometimes, other times, he's he just lays it right out there. But uh, it's not. It, it's pretty harmless stuff. It's not very controversial. Yeah. It's just he's just got an opinion about everything, and he likes to state it. And and um, it, it's just um, a, a bit amusing at times in a world where we've got the Nick Sabins of the world that that don't want to comment typically on anything controversial. Want to hold it to to, to the vest, close to the vest, and and not say a whole lot uh, that's going to be repeated a number of times or taken out of context. By the media, um, he also re- referred to uh, the other conferences. I guess they would be as cats, saying those cats wouldn't want to play in the SEC, and play more than an eight-game schedule. When talking about the SEC playing a nine-game schedule, I did a recent video talking about why I believe that the SEC should play a nine-game schedule. But I-, I get the point about the eight games and and this being a difficult league. So he was kind of taking it in that direction, but. Uh, I think the jury's still out on Brett Bielema at Arkansas. I will give him a pass on 3-9 and nine and 8 8 in the SEC. There have certainly been guys in the past that have taken over um, football programs in bad states and had a rough year or two before they got it cranked up and churned up and got their players in. Uh, it's just going to be very difficult because Arkansas expects a lot. They've got a proud football tradition. They have competed in the past. But they compete because they get players from outside Arkansas. They can't just stay in Arkansas and take those players and compete in the SEC West, the toughest division in college football. They've got to go elsewhere, and to bring players to Arkansas is sometimes a challenge. I feel bad for Razorback fans. They had it going with Bobby uh, Bobby Petrino. Uh, they won 10 games. They went to the Sugar Bowl. They lost to Ohio State, but they had a really good football team. They had had it going there. They had won a Cotton Bowl before that. They had a good thing going. Then he makes a mess of everything, does some stupid things, and then they bring, then they make a horrible hire and bring in John L. Smith, who was a train wreck at both Louisville and Michigan State, and why you would hire that guy, I have no earthly clue, and it's just been downhill from there. Bielema could be the savior, uh, but it's going to be extremely difficult in that division. Mm. Yeah, I agree. It's just, yeah, it all just comes down to winning uh, in the SEC. And, yeah, he got handed a program that was in shambles, to put it lightly. And, yeah, John, just having John L. Smith there for a year it still doesn't make sense at all. Uh, although, <laughs> uh, like something you said earlier, you said Bielema was entertaining. John L. Smith was extremely entertaining, especially in press conferences. But uh, other than that, he really kind of drove the program into the ground. But, uh, yeah, it's just going to come down. If, if he can recruit and uh, get some guys in there that can really play, then he'll, he'll be a respected voice like he wants to be. But until then, really, uh, we'll keep having these conversations, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, and they've got so much money tied up in him, you got to think that he's got a pretty long leash. And at Arkansas, they're not necessarily expecting – the expectations that you would have at Alabama or at LSU, but still they would expect seven or eight wins, get us to postseason play, get us to bowl games, and then hopefully once every five or six years you can get us in the mix for a serious SEC championship run. That's what I would expect the reasonable Razorback fan would be wanting to get out of Brett Bielema. Yeah, then it, it's got to be hard for, for Arkansas fans just looking at some of the guys that have been hired recently. I mean, of course, Gus Malzahn, but that's a... One in a million case where in the very first year a coach makes the national championship. But even Butch Jones, uh, you know, came in, had an incredible uh, recruiting class. Even even though they haven't been able uh, to win the games yet, uh, they were still better than Arkansas. And it's got to be hard as an Arkansas fan to look at those and be like, why? Why can't we do that? Uh, if they're doing it, we're in the SEC. 
uh, but uh, well, yeah, I guess that was <laughs> I didn't have a whole lot going out of that, but um, that's pretty much the long and short of it is just getting guys there to play. So. All right, we're joined by Charlie Burris of the Southeasterner. Jump on his website, check it out there. Uh, when you like a little hardcore football mixed in with a little humor, a little sarcasm, and some good stuff, he's got some lists there to check out. And again, a ton of SEC football, but you but you cover the SEC landscape, uh, all sports, right, Charlie? I try. I do what I can. Uh, definitely football and basketball the most, but uh, then covering baseball too. I just got it all. Good stuff. Hey, Charlie, thanks so much for the information and the insight. We appreciate it. All right, thanks.